I want to begin by calling this meeting to order. Um, I don't have my watch with me. I think it's about 10 after noon, uh, May 16th, 2019. Um, we're all call shows all the commissioners are present and I'd like to have a motion uh, for adoption of the agenda with a modification. If you can see that there is a little sequence in the order that we would like to start with a presentation of colors and then the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation. Can I hear a motion to adopt the agenda with that modification? Okay, all in favor say aye. Okay, the agenda has been modified, let us begin. We will start with a presentation of colors. Please stand and join me in welcoming the Reichert House Color Guard and in support of today's um, ceremony. Thank you very much to the Reichert House for providing this service. I would now like to call forward the Reverend Shelley Wilson and honor the Reverend Catherine Dearlove as the president of the uh, Alachua County Faith Leaders Alliance to lead us in invocation. Welcome everyone. The citizens of Gainesville and Alachua County include those who call the great mystery by many names. God, Yahweh, Wankantaka, Buddha, Allah, Brahman, Goddess, Satnam, Teo, and ground of being as amongst many. These names are now planted and transplanted here in Florida soil. The great traditions of the world joined, now growing in our garden. Representatives of Buddhism, Islam, and Christianity are able to be here today. And on behalf of all the citizens of our community, we join in blessing Mayor Poe and Commissioner Hay Santos, who will be sworn in today, and all the leaders of our community, holding them in the compassion that embraces all humankind and all creation. Please be seated. <laughs> May I invite us to move from the busyness of our midweek lunchtime lives to a common space of quiet reflection and gratitude. <clears throat> Excuse me. Gratitude for this place in which we live, for our elected officials who will pledge courageously to serve, and for one another. Let's please pause to breathe and center ourselves in this collective moment. Thank you. To the one we call by many names, 
On this day, you call us to be in community and in celebration in the city that is loved by so many. Open our ears so that we may hear wisdom's call. Be with our thoughts and ideas, with our consensus and our disagreement, with our brilliant inspiration and our tepid tries. Help us to listen before speaking so that we may truly understand one another. Help us to value and appreciate each other's wisdom and experience. Let us always remember that we share the city of Gainesville together, a city where safety and inclusive community are celebrated and where we live in beauty and tranquility. Be with us in peace as we work towards justice. May we be enveloped in the spirit of gratitude and excitement, reinvigorated for the journey forward. May your light enfold us. May your spirit guide us. This is our prayer, said in the name of your beloved. Assalamu alaikum. Peace, peace and blessings of God upon you. O oh God, we seek thine help and blessing. Bless the newly elected mayor and commissioner as they start a new term of office. Running a city is a great responsibility that city residents have put on their shoulders. City and its residents face a number of challenges. Oh God, please help the mayor and commissioners with your guidance to help improve life of the residents of this beautiful city of Gainesville we call home. Amen. We give thanks, O oh God, for those who offer themselves in service to this community. We pl pray your blessing on them all, and especially on our mayor. As they labor together, grant them a collaborative spirit and collective imagination that moves them to do justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you. O oh, spirit of justice and peace, may our leaders serve our citizenry responsibly so that together we may co-create a humane, educated, and prosperous society. May our leaders here and everywhere serve the common good and respond to needs and opportunities with wisdom, welcome, liberty, and love. May it be so. Amen. May it be so. Amen. Amen. Thank you to all the members of the Faith Leaders Alliance for their presence and support in today's ceremony. At this time, let's bring our focus to the reason for today's gathering and call forth the Honorable Michonne Rawls, Alachua County Court Judge, and Adrian Hayes Santos and members of his family to join him in his oath of office. If you would raise your right hand, repeat after me. I, Adrian Hayes Santos, do solemnly swear I, Adrian Hayes Santos, do solemnly swear that I will support, honor, and protect that I will support, honor, and protect and defend the Constitution and government and defend the Constitution and government of the United States and of the State of Florida of the United States and of the State of Florida that I am duly qualified to hold office that I am duly qualified to hold office under the Constitution of the State under the Constitution of the State and under the Charter of the City of Gainesville and of the Charter of the City of Gainesville and that I will well and faithfully perform that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of City Commissioner the duties of City Commissioner on which I am now about to enter on which I am now about to enter thank you congratulations Commissioner Hayes Santos and now And now with Judge Rawl, the Honorable Judge Rawls remaining here, will Mayor Lauren Poe, well, Lauren Poe 
and members of his family please come forward for his oath of office. <laughs> Raise your right hand. I, Lauren Poe, do solemnly swear. I, Lauren Poe, do solemnly swear. That I will support, honor, and protect. That I will support, honor, and protect. And defend the Constitution and government. And defend the Constitution and government. Of the United States and of the state of Florida. Of the United States and the state of Florida. That I am duly qualified to hold office. That I am duly qualified to hold office. Under the Constitution of the state under the Constitution of the State and under the Charter of the City of Gainesville and under the Charter of the City of Gainesville and that I will well and faithfully perform and that I will well and faithfully perform the duties of the duties of Mayor Mayor on which I am now about to enter on which I am now about to enter Congratulations Thank you Congratulations to everyone. As I turn the leadership of this program now over to Mayor Poe, I release the rest of the commission and those who have been sitting up here in the sun to find some shade. Good afternoon, and thank you for being here. It's a pleasure to be before you today, serving as your city commissioner for the past three years, and to be reelected for three and a half more years is an honor. And to be honest, I couldn't ask for more. Serving, serving and running for office, you get to talk to so many diverse people about what makes Gainesville great and what we can do to make it even better. And that is what drives me. I'm passionate about where we're going as a city. I first want to thank, and I wouldn't be able to do this without an incredible amount of support from friends, family, volunteers, donors, and people I have never met who helped spread the word about my campaign. I wouldn't be able to continue to serve in office without you. Thank you. Truly, from the bottom of my heart, thank you. And especially to the voters of District 4, thank you very much. There are a couple people I want to mention by name who have always been there to help on the campaign. My mother, Allison Hayes, who was up here earlier, who raised me as a single mother, thank you. I also want to thank two people on my, on my campaign who helped lead us to victory, Brian Eastman and Bennett Reagan, who were there every step of the way, thank you. I truly do appreciate every, everyone who helped on the campaign, our volunteers and interns who worked for months, thank you. We had dedicated volunteers, young and old, who walk door to door and make calls every week. It's because of you and your support that we won by a huge margin against an onslaught of negative attacks. Thank you. Now Gainesville is a changing city, one that faces many issues, but we must hold true to the values that make us strong. We have a city that's not working for everyone, but a city that can be better. That's why I ran for office, to make Gainesville a better place to live, work, and play for everyone to focus on transformational projects that can make a real difference in our community. We have issues in our community that have caused generational inequities, yet we have opportunities as a community to be a leader and to come together to tackle the issues that are before us today and the issues that will come. Gainesville is at a tipping point, and we cannot sit back and do nothing. 
I will make you that promise that I'll bring forward positive progressive policies and solutions to the issues that affect our community and fight to get them passed. Over the past three years, while I've been on the commission, our community and commission have done a lot of great things. We passed referendums to fund our schools, children, and parks. We protected our youth and passed a conversion therapy ban. We fought and kept our local control of our utility. We are taking on climate change and set a goal to be a 100% renewable energy city by 2045. That's the best word, clap, yeah. And you know what? We are already well on our way to that goal. This spring, we had the highest amount of renewable energy in our history as a city. 41% of our renewable energy came from, 41% of our electricity came from renewable sources. To put that in perspective, the state average is 4%. And we're not stopping there. We are looking at expanding solar in our city to continue our path over the next few years to move towards renewable energy. Waste is also one of the biggest issues affecting our community. And our city is confronting it head on. We set a goal to be zero waste by 2040 and to take a stand that we cannot continue to create endless amounts of waste. We've moved forward on a zero waste strategic plan to give us that path forward. Past single use plastic bag and, straw and uh, plastic styrofoam bands. And later today, we'll actually be discussing a plastic straw ban. But there is more that we need to do. Food waste composes 18% of the waste that we send to our landfills. And that's why I put forward a pilot program this year for residential and commercial composting programs that are designed to reduce the food waste we send to our landfills. And later this year, I'll bring it forward both a single-use plastic ban and a universal recycling ordinance that will give us the needed steps to put us on a path towards zero waste. Our city should have a world-class park system, and we've had set goals to have a park within a 10-minute walk of every home in our city. Over 30 parks in our city will either be newly built or upgraded over the next few years. We also purchased the largest uh, track of undeveloped land in the city limits, over 700 acres, and protected it for future generations in partnership with the county. Arts and culture, another essential part of our community, Yet we have seen a huge decrease in state funding for the arts in recent years. I will work to fund our arts, to make our downtown not only the cultural hub for our city, but the cultural hub for our region. I am focused on making our downtown vibrant and having activities for all, all people. I support, I support expanding downtown festivals and cultural events. This year I put forward on our, in our budget funding to create more murals and innovative pilot programs to create art and music in our streets. Our downtown is the heart of our city, and we need to treat it that way and invest in the strength of our downtown. Our city is committed to equity and standing up for our lowest paid workers. Over the past three years, and by the time I, or by the past three years, the lowest paid workers in our city have had their pay increase by 53%. And And by the time I leave office, we are on a path to pay our lowest paid city workers $15 living wage. <laughs> While there is still much more work to be done to ensure that everyone in our, in our community is a part of the growing com uh, economy, I'm proud to say that over 11,000 jobs have been created in our community since I became a city commissioner, and we have one of the lowest unemployment rates in the state of Florida. We also need to continue our focus on Eastside to create good paying jobs and address food security issues. I'm excited about the opportunities in East Gainesville. We transformed the CRA to become a force for economic development. The Hartwood neighborhood is almost finished. New businesses are opening up in the Cornerstone commercial development on Hawthorne Road, and we're seeing private development on Waldo Road and University Avenue. But one of the most exciting projects on the side, uh, I'm looking forward to is the opportunity we have at 8th and Waldo. We have an opportunity to make something that will trans be transformational and will bring new life to East Gainesville and the Waldo Road Corridor. So I'm, I'm tired of reading stories about fires and rental homes where the fire alarms were not working. I'm tired of hearing about drastically higher energy bills in our, in our rental units because there is no incentive for landlords to invest in energy efficient upgrades. I'm tired of seeing slum rental housing in our community because there are no inspections to ensure that housing is safe. 
Over 50% of the residents, of our, our residents who live in Gainesville live in rental homes. And we have an opportunity this year to pass a life-changing ordinance for the renters in our community. An ordinance that will give us universal landlord licenses that ensure timely inspections for the health and safety of units, real energy efficiency standards to lower utility bills, and a mediation program between renters and landlords to help keep people in their homes. When this ordinance is in full effect, we will, we will, unsafe housing will be a thing of our past. And if you rent in Gainesville, you can be assured that your housing is safe and energy efficient. We must also address the affordable housing crisis that affects our city. The state did not make it easier this year. They put a new preemption to not allow cities the right to require affordable housing and new developments. But I believe that our community is focused enough to make that dramatic, take the dramatic steps that are needed to address affordable housing in spite of the state. We must make updates to our zoning code to allow affordable housing to be created. We must create a land trust to protect at-risk neighborhoods. And we must work to build public housing that ranges from housing needed for homeless residents to workforce housing. We must ensure that there is affordable housing in every part of our city. In my next term, we will reach the 50-year anniversary of the war on drugs, a war that is universally recognized as a failure, resulting in increased incarceration of minorities and wasting billions of dollars of taxpayer dollars. While the state and federal governments refuse to act, I believe our city will. I'm pushing for full decriminalization of cannabis in the city of Gainesville so our law enforcement can focus on crimes that most impact our community. Now, I've talked about a lot of things in our community that we need to address, but we have something that is at the forefront that would help almost every person in our city and would be one of the most transformational projects our community has ever seen. Internet is the lifeblood of a 21st century economy. It touches every part of our lives. To graduate from high school in Florida, you are mandated to take an online class. You can't search for a job or apply for a job without having internet access. Internet is no longer a luxury, it is a necessity. Yet Gainesville pays the highest prices in Florida and some of the highest in the country for broadband internet. That means thousands of our community residents are left in the dark. It is driving a new generation into poverty. But we have an opportunity in our city that few cities have to end the digital divide, to drive down internet prices for our working families and save Gainesville residents millions of dollars a year. Over the past couple of years, the City Commission has been working on a feasibility study to see if the city could provide the cheapest gigabit internet in the country to every resident of our city. That study, that study has come back and shows that we can do it, and we can still make money for the city. Now let that sink in. We pay some of the highest prices in the country right now, but if the city provided a fiber network to every resident in the community, we could offer the lowest prices in, in the country. That means jobs. Cities like Chattanooga, have, who have built networks, have seen huge amounts of economic growth, over $1.3 million, and over 5,000 jobs created because of their fiber expansion. That means revenue for our utility. Cities like Lafayette, Louisiana, are gaining millions of dollars in profit from the internet expansion they did, which would result in potentially lowering energy rates for GRU users. Over the next year, a discussion of building our fiber internet network and Gainesville having the cheapest gigabit internet in the country will be before us. We must, as a community, ensure that we make the best decision for our community and we do not leave out a new generation of people in the digital divide. Access to knowledge is the greatest equalizer there is. Let's ensure that all members of our community have that access. Finally, when we look at these transformational projects, we can't go at it alone. It's gonna take our community coming together, working with stakeholders like the University of Florida, Santa Fe College, our school board, our county commission, to move our city in a forward direction and tackle these issues before us. And also, 
probably most important, it's going, to take, it's going to take working with my fellow city commissioners. I'm looking forward to working with you and being collaborative and solving the biggest issues that affect our community. I'm passionate and excited about the future of Gainesville and where we are going as a city. And I'm going to, I'm going to take work, it's going to take work. It's not going to be easy. But I'm ready to help us reach these opportunities. But I truly do believe that it will take together, us as, together as a united community, we can make Gainesville a better place to live, work, and play for everyone in Gainesville. Thank you. And I'll bring up, thank you very much, and now I'll bring Mayor Poe for his speech. This is the day that the Lord has made, and what a day it is, and we give thanks. Some of y'all are going to think that Adrian and I broke sunshine when you hear what I have to say, <laughs> but I assure you it is not so. It's, we come from a place of common compassion and commitment to our city, and that is why you will see such alignment, not just with the two of us, but the seven folks that you have sent to represent you on the Gainesville City Commission. So I say good afternoon and welcome. It is with great humility and a sense of profound honor that I stand before you today having just taken my fourth oath of office and second as your mayor. I'm humbled that my city has selected me to be their representative. I'm duty bound to you, my beloved Gainesville. I pledge to you my passion, my focus, my faith, and my love. I stand before you prepared to serve as a citizen of this community in profound connection with our most daunting challenges and our greatest hopes. I would like to thank our residents for their continued support, our city leaders, our police officers, our firefighters, our line workers, our concrete workers, receptionists, engineers, lifeguards, and the more than 2,000 other employees for your incredible commitment and service to our community. Thank you to the current commission I serve with. It is such a privilege and honor. Gigi and Gail, you made it through your rookie season. <laughs> You've established yourself as starters, key members of our team, and I cannot imagine a city commission, and I cannot ima not imagine us facing our challenges without the two of you. I'm so proud of you in your first year. For David and Harvey, you made it to your re-election year. <laughs> It's different. It's not as much fun, but what an opportunity both of you have to go be evangelicals for the city of Gainesville and the great work that you're doing and tell folks what you have been up to and why it's so important. Uh, it is such an honor and a privilege, privilege to serve with the two of you. Your compassion, your deep thinking, your ability to synthesize all of the information that we throw at you and to make good decisions. What an honor it has been to serve with the two of you. Adrian, and, and I should uh, say especially Allison, thank you for Adrian. Uh, he's a remarkable young man and you build a certain bond uh, with somebody uh, with whom you go through the campaign process with. Uh, I remember it happened in a meaningful way with Thomas Hawkins when I first ran with him in 2008 and we cut our teeth. Uh, and, and that's uh, true of you as well, Adrian. Uh, I, I feel like we have a, a camaraderie and a, an understanding that, that transcends the job. Uh, and you are truly somebody that I feel fortunate to, to, that our paths crossed at the same time uh, and that we're able to sort of lower our shoulder uh, and, and, and lead into the great issues of our city together. So thank you, Adrian, and congratulations on your reelection. And then Helen, you've made it to your December moment on the city commission. <laughs> 
your final year and what a, what a distinguished uh, five years of service you have provided. Uh, your, your compassion uh, permeates the commission and our deliberations. Uh, your willingness to go everywhere and hear everyone and bring that voice back to the city commission so it's heard by all. Uh, and I am excited for your final year and, and what you're going to be able to, to help us accomplish as a city commission. Uh, so thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and I can't, Signy Die will get here before we know it. So, so we have a lot of good work to do over the next 12 months. I would also like to thank all of the former elected officials who, with the wisdom of the master farmer, have sowed the seeds so that our community may now reap the harvest. Our businesses, our nonprofits, our faith leaders who lift up and support us, and most especially, my family, including my father, who shed this mortal coil since this occasion last, my dear mother, to whom I owe my moral foundation and ethic of responsibility to our community and service above self. My two extraordinary daughters, Beatrice and Elizabeth, who bring me so much joy every single day and teach me new lessons every moment of my life. And finally, Saint Emily, my incredible wife, whose love and support makes it possible for me to serve all of you. Thank you, Emily, and I love you so much. This year marks the 150th year Gainesville has officially been incorporated as a city. As we take time to reflect on those past 150 years, it is impossible not to be impacted by the long, heavy, and at times oppressive shadow of our history. I wonder if those early pioneers sitting down for an afternoon picnic at Bulwer Springs considered the racial and economic segregation that lay ahead? Did they consider separate neighborhoods, schools, churches, markets, and juke joints that would define our city for generations to come? If so, did they care? Was it passed off as an inevitable consequence of our human condition, or did they believe that they were doing what was in the best interest of our community? backed by the lessons of their faith leaders and business leaders and government leaders, without question and full of confidence? Did some foresee the tragic outcomes of their traditions and try to chart a different path, or resign themselves to inaction, keep their heads down and their mouths shut? Do they march proudly at the head of the band, obediently celebrating the way towards exclusionary neighborhoods, schools, and businesses with great fanfare, quiet indifference, or stoic pride. Yes, this is part of our history, the unchangeable past delivered to us unto this day. And while we cannot change the past, we most certainly can acknowledge and honor the impact it has on our present and bend the arc towards justice for our children, justice for our next 150 years. Because in that past were stars lighting the night sky, our moral compass guiding us like the North Star and reminding us, us of where we needed to go. Men like Josiah T. Walls and A. Quinn Jones, pioneers blazing a path for so many to follow like Dr. Cosby, Dr. Banks, Nurse Filer. Civil rights warriors like Reverend T.A. Wright and Charles Chestnut and so many more leaders allies, and champions of justice. We begin each evening portion of our city commission meeting, and in fact this very meeting, with a simple ritual. We recite the Pledge of Allegiance with all in attendance. Some choose to sit, 
most stand, and all show respect to the occasion. For me, and the reason I make the choice to repeat the short and simple oath, the same since I was a child, is for the oral reminder, my recommitment, witnessed by a candid world, to liberty and justice for all. For this is what I have been instructed. For the Lord your God is the God of gods and the Lord of lords, the great, the mighty, and the awesome God who does not show partiality or take a bribe. He executes justice for the orphan and the widow and shows his love for the alien by giving him food and clothing. So show your love for the alien, for you were aliens in the lands of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God, you shall serve him and cling to him. And you shall swear by his name, he is your praise and he is your God, who has done these great and awesome things for you, which your eyes have seen. Justice is measured by how well we help up and help out our brothers and sisters who have stumbled and tripped, not by how effectively we, not by how effectively we lock them up. We live, in a, we live in a nation where the majority of people in jail are there without a conviction, maybe for some a short time, for many more of an eternity but for nearly all long enough to sever the family ties, the social ties, and the economic ties that link them with their community. It is at this point we have willingly recast the shadow of our path, past onto their path, obscuring their way and hiding the true light of justice and progress. I commit to you that we will shine the light on the shadows and reorient the path so that it leads to glory and prosperity not hardship and despair. For the young, the infirm, the mentally ill, and the addicted, the unlucky, and the victims of the seductiveness of evil, we will lift you up. We will offer you a better path, a path that is well lit and buttressed with support of your community that will include some with means, others with a kind heart, and many who have fallen themselves and know the way back up and onward. We will work as a community to build the emotional literacy necessary to bridge our present condition with our greater ideals. And we will do this as a community of goodness based in compassion and driven by justice. We will snap the intergenerational cycle of poverty maintained by racial and economic segregation by marshalling our greatest resources towards helping our children and youth. Our residents have been consistently clear. We are willing to invest in our next generation, but we only successfully do so as one, unified as a greater Gainesville. While pride in your block is fine for barbecue cook-offs and holiday decorating contests, we must rise above the family, the block, the neighborhood, the city, the county, and act as community. The lines between city, county, School, college, university, public, private, rich, poor, must end. It is this toxic emotional economic, it is this toxic emotional, economic, and geographic segregation that has defined our past 150 years, but it will be the intentional and dedicated move away from these unjust divisions that will define our next 150 years. Now don't get me wrong, we're on our way. We have our first ever majority, major, sorry, minority majority city commission. Four of our six charter officers are women, three women of color. An uncommon sight in a white majority city in the South, and that's something you all should be proud of. We are committed to protecting and celebrating all of our residents, regardless of where they are from or how long they have been here. And we rejoice in our status as a welcoming and international city. We have established an unprecedented partnership with the University of Florida with the intention of realizing the untapped potential of our two institutions. 
and solving the great urban challenges of our time. As we evolve this relationship, solutions discovered in Gainesville will go on to lift up communities around the globe. I am proud to be a Florida Gator. <laughs> Unemployment is low and wages are rising. More than 500 new businesses have opened their doors in the last three years, some of which were helped along by the city's entrepreneurship program for non-traditional business owners facing adversity. We have great parks, clean air and water, and more renewable energy than anyone in the state. We have a top 10 university and a number one college, and we were working tirelessly to make access to quality food, housing, transportation, and jobs a reality for all of our residents. We are working to bring more affordable broadband connectivity to every home, enriching after and out of school programming for every student, better health care connections for our most vulnerable residents, and safer transportation options for young and old alike. We will be making unprecedented investments in non -neg long neglected parts of our city, including along Waldo Road and in the Coppers redevelopment area. We are working to connect people with mental health resources. We are working to better protect our water resources, including our creek system, and we are building new amazing parks and protecting more and more sensitive land. And we are not even close to being done. We have thrown open the doors of opportunity because we know that when we open a door for even one of us, we create opportunity for all of us. If we love our city, we must reconcile with the inconvenient truths of our past and work to become a temple of inclusion and progress for future generations. I was interviewed by a pair of young men at my election night party who, as it turns out, are paid trackers funded by far-right interests looking to gather damaging footy, footage of liberal and progressive officials for future use. Because it was election night and I was in a celebratory mood, I agreed to the interview in the name of progress and unity. They're last in a series of irrelevant and somewhat bizarre questions was whether I supported the idea of reparations. As has been a topic of a conversation for some time, but especially in the context of the 2020 presidential election. I answered that while this was a national issue and the conversation needs to take place on a national stage, I do in fact support reparations. And I find it hard to imagine why any rational person would not. So I ask you, Gainesville, what are you willing to do to repair the sins of our past? Are you willing to hire a person with a criminal record or pay a living wage? Are you willing to live next to somebody with a different hue of skin than you or who makes less money, maybe a lot less money than you do? Are you willing to hire a woman or a minority owned business? Hey, we got a list or send you your privileged child to a school in need of more diversity and parental support? Are you willing to use less, give more, help without judgment? What are you willing to do once you close the Facebook or the Insta or the Twitter app and engage the outside world, the real world, a terrifying and beautiful world? That is where I will meet you to fight side by side on the battlefield of justice. We must follow the lead of our brave foremothers and forefathers who are willing to take off their armor, venture out of their comfortable lives, and lean in hard to bend the arc towards justice. Because I still believe that it is for all, but only if we, the people, make it so. What do you say, Gainesville? Is it in us? What will our posterity be saying about us filtered through the lens of history 150 years from this day. Is it we, today, who launch this mission, carried by the spirit of our ancestors' souls, but squarely on us to determine the speed and direction we travel? What do you say, Gainesville? Are you with me? Thank you, and may God bless the city of Gainesville. And with that, I'd like our city commission to come up very quickly. We have one more order of business uh, this afternoon, and then you can hit that delicious cold beverage table and the refreshment table.
感じる。And I, I try not to be vapid, but, but that's a fine looking bunch of commissioners y'all got there. I mean, it's okay to say, <laughs> oh, mom's clapping. <laughs> um, so we have uh, one, one more order of business. We need to elect our pro tem for the coming year. And so I will, as tradition uh, indicates, recognize our current uh, pro tem, uh, Commissioner Adrian Hay Santos. Thank you. Mm -hmm. There's a motion a second to uh, appoint Harvey Ward as our mayor pro tem uh, for the coming year. It's not a small responsibility, Commissioner Ward, as all the past pro tems will tell you, uh, because I'm a piece of work. Uh, but all, uh, all in favor of the motion, say aye. aye. All opposed? That motion passes unanimously. Congratulations, pro tem Ward. And as that concludes our business uh, for this ceremony, the City Commission will be reconvening as close to 1.30 as we can back at City Hall. But we invite all of you to stay in fellowship, enjoy some refreshments, uh, and uh, speak to your fellow uh, Gaines villagers on how we're going to accomplish these tasks that the Commissioner and I have just laid out for you. Congratulations. We are adjourned. <laughs>